Hey there, if you are an aspiring photographer that wants to build a business in 2020, I have one tip that's really the only tip you need to pay attention to in order to experience success in your business. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. I'm glad you found my YouTube channel. This is a place where we love to empower and equip photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also showing you a little behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. Today, I'm talking about how you build a business in 2020, what's the one tip, the one thing that I'd recommend to anybody. And I'm doing this video because I think on this channel, a lot of times recently, I've talked a lot about gear, right? Our big switch to the R6, which has been amazing. Um, I've talked about some editing tips and tricks in Lightroom. Um, I even talk about um, some other business things, but the truth is, is that all of that stuff is great. All that stuff is really important information to know. But at the end of the day, it's not the secret to make you successful. And if you found this channel and you think like, oh, Caitlin, she's talking about her gear, talking about, I actually, that's not what I became known for over the last 12 years. I actually grew in the world of education because something weird, weird, but also awesome was happening to my business. Um, back in like 2010 to 12, we started seeing this like really crazy shift and it wasn't normal and it wasn't common, and I didn't really have a name for it, but I realized after doing some research, after reading a certain book, I started realizing I was using my personality, I was using who I am as a person, I was molding every part of my experience around who I was, and I was winning. And I, I think the reason why I wanna tell you this tip is because this is the number one thing that still works and is still powerful today that has lasted through the span of 12 years. So if you're a wedding photographer starting a business in 2020, it can be overwhelming. So what are the pain points of being a wedding photographer in 2020? Well, uh, technology is super accessible. Getting great images. I just saw an image uh, yesterday, a photographer posted of him and his wife on an anniversary trip at a resort. And it literally was one of the most beautiful photos I've seen in a long time. And I looked in the comments and he shot it with an iPhone. Crazy. I was blown away by the quality of this image. So, you know, how do we compete with the fact that getting great images is so easy? It's not super affordable for everyone, but cameras and digital photography and iPhone capabilities, everything is easier to create beautiful imagery than it was 10 years ago. So that's a huge pain point. What's another problem? Well, there's a lot of photographers, right? There's so many of us. I started a Facebook group in my like hometown, Richmond, not a huge city at all. Um, about 10 years ago, there's 1,400 wedding photographers in this group now, 1,400 in my city alone. It's easy to step back and be like, why would I even try to start a wedding photography business when there's so many wedding photographers across the world? I'm, the competition is just too much. That's another pain point. Another pain point is, is that if you try to start now to gain momentum on social media, it can feel like you are just running an uphill race and you're never gonna catch up, right? Because people that started a decade ago, they have a leg up, right? They have the followers, they have the traction, they have, but what if I told you that instead of getting amazing at Lightroom and getting the best gear, like buying that mirrorless camera, um, what if I told you that all of these things were not the secret to make you succeed as a photographer? The secret to succeeding as a wedding photographer in 2020 is the same secret that it was the secret back in 2010 when I first started and started to get momentum. It's that you cannot be replaced. There's literally never going to be another Caitlyn James. There are so many other people who have minty teal brands. There are There's literally another Caitlyn James with red hair and looks just like me who's in the creative world but she can never compete with what we've created because the foundation of our business is founded on who I am beyond the camera. You think about it, people who hire you to be a wedding photographer, people who hire you to be a professional photographer in general are hiring you for skill, but why are they gonna come back to you and be attracted to you, right? If everyone's just showing the best of the best work everywhere online, and you just, you're looking at portfolio images, over portfolio images, what's gonna make you stand out? The only thing you have to offer is who you are. The problem is most people in business do not think that beyond their ability to be a photographer, there's anything great about them. There, what, what's the use sharing like the weird things or like the unique things about your life, or your personality? Why would anyone care about your obsession with a certain type of dog? Why would anyone care about your favorite color? Why would anyone care about the interesting experiences and the stories of your life? It's easy to write that off because it's easier actually to feel insecure and be like, I'm just gonna show my work. But the truth 
truth is the secret to running a business in 2020 and to gain momentum and to gain people coming back is to give them something to attach to. And if you don't give them something to attach to, then they're not going to remember you and they're not going to be attached to your brand and to your personality in a way that makes them eventually turn into a client. I can say this because I'm 12 years in, we're fully booked for 2021, charging $10,000 a wedding, and I don't pay for any exterior marketing other than letting people into my life. And I've marketed my business this way for 12 years. And I've always thought one day this is going to run out. One day, this whole process of marketing personally, is just going to come to an end. But the opposite has actually happened. Personal marketing is stronger and more more effective for us in 2020 than it was even back in 2010. Sure, there weren't as many photographers back in 2010. Sure, personal marketing in 2010 wasn't that popular. Everyone was just paying for ads on the knot.com or in magazines, and we were doing something different. Well, now there's tons of personal marketing, but it's still the number one way to build your tribe. I highly recommend If you've never read this book before, it's quick, fast, easy read. Seth Godin wrote a book called Tribes. And once I read that book, I realized, oh my gosh, this is what's happening in our business because there was no other explanation. Why do people care about Michael and I? Like, why do people get so attached to us? Why do people rave about us after weddings, even wedding days that are full of rain and stress and chaos? Why do they love us? They love us because they become attached to our personality online. Then they start to get to know us when they really start to follow us on social media. Then they become a KJ couple and they have a personalized experience from the beginning to the end. And then they spend a whole wedding day with us and our personalities. And we leave the day and they feel like they have lifelong friends who are part of a major day in their life that they'll never forget. And that's powerful. And that's how you get people to pay $10,000. And that's how you build a a purpose-filled business. So I know that was a lot to throw at you, but I'm going to give you a few tips to how to make this actually happen because it can be overwhelming. You could say, well, Caitlin, I just like photography. Like this is overwhelming, but think about it. If you want to be a photographer and take pretty pictures coming from someone who's shot for 12 years straight, eventually the pretty pictures get old, right? I recently am like newly inspired. This new camera is awesome. I'm excited about it. But eventually the purpose of your business, it can't just be about pretty pictures because that just kind of runs its course. You get to a place where you start to be like, well, yeah, that's beautiful, but you don't feel anything anymore. When you make your business about the people you're serving, it transforms every part of who you are as a photographer and what your business exists for in the first place. So how do you make this happen in your own business when you're starting one? And if you're already a photographer, you've been a photographer for years, that's great. This still applies to you. So number one, stop only showing your portfolio on social media. I know this is not true for everyone, but for me, I have found that when I get on a roll and I'm shooting wedding after wedding after wedding, and I'm posting um, all these like portfolio shots on my Instagram account, there's some engagement. People are excited to see it, right? But then I go back and I start comparing to my personal posts. Sometimes recently, we shot a beautiful wedding in Texas. Gorgeous. I mean, it was one of my top five weddings, I think, in my career. It was the, the images were some of my favorites. Um, you're going to see them all over my website, Facebook ads, everything. Facebook ads are for educational resources. We do not run Facebook ads for a wedding photography business. That's a whole other video. Anyway, love this wedding. And it was gorgeous. But I looked at the stats of a picture of the bride from this wedding, and then a grainy black and white iPhone photo of my daughter. She fell and got a concussion while we were away at this wedding, uh, asking people to pray for her because poor girl, she was terrified to go to the ER. Triple the amount of engagement at a minimum, triple the amount. Why? Because people, even though they love our work and they love seeing our work and our clients are coming um, out of the woodwork from our following, our social media presence, we don't have to work to get those clients. Even though that's our reality, people still care about our Evie girl, our three and a half year old, more than they care about a bridal portrait. And that's powerful. That's the attachment that I was talking about. So if you only show your portfolio images on social media, you're only letting people get attached to what you're capable of doing behind the camera and no other part of you, right? I could give you list and list and list of photographers that we have either, either trained in our workshops or through courses or friends in our industry who can vouch for the fact that when you let people into your life, you can't get rid of them. They are attached to you. They love following your story. They love feeling like they're a part of what's happening in your life. And so if you only show people what is in your portfolio on social media, you're not letting them to the 
you're not letting them into the personal side of your brand. And that's a huge, huge loss. It's a loss so big that if you miss out on this and you feel like you're falling behind, I guarantee you this is one of the number one ways to pick back momentum, to get people re-engaged. We see that we have a business course where it's 12 months of content, where people learn and grow from every aspect of how I've run my business. It's amazing. It's, an, it's a great experience if you're a photographer who's struggling in business. The number one thing that we hear is from the first module about personal marketing and people are shocked when people start to engage with stuff that they never thought they would engage with. Photographers will post and say, I have never once talked about anything besides my work. And this was the first time I did and I have 14 comments on Instagram. I never get 14 comments on Instagram. It's because people relate to other normal everyday people things. People don't relate and don't have anything to say necessarily about a gorgeous bridal portrait that I shot in Texas, but a lot of different people have experiences with kids having concussions or being nervous for a toddler who had to go to the hospital. And so that's why we had so much engagement on that post versus a gorgeous bridal portrait that I'm like, this is gonna kill it on the internet. And then it was great, it was fine engagement, but Evie won, my daughter won, because she is the most relatable. People can relate to her. So number one, stop showing your portfolio, only your portfolio on social media. You still wanna show it, but you don't want it to show it solely by itself. You wanna include your personal life and who you are into your posts. Number two, let people know who you are behind the camera. So this can happen by using number one, you know, putting yourself out there on social media, but it also happens in how you communicate with your clients, right? Um, and that is how you communicate before you meet them in person, but also how you communicate with them once you are in person. So Michael and I, we have this pattern in our engagement sessions. Um, I don't know exactly the timestamp of when this happens, but I noticed last week at an engagement session, there is a clear distinction. It happens at every single shoot where we're walking during an engagement session and the couple feels comfortable enough with us that I'm walking in front looking for locations but talking to the bride and Michael's walking in the back and he starts trying to get to know the groom. Um, we just did a, a session for a couple named Hope and Jesse and Jesse, um, the groom, he was walking with Michael and I heard Michael say to him, so what do you do for a living? Like where, where's home for you? And they start having this conversation and sharing about our life and getting to know his life. That matters more than their final gallery of images. And I say that because it's the foundation of building a strong relationship with our clients. And if you don't ever let yourself engage with that personal side of your business, you miss out on so much that community style marketing has to offer, which community style marketing is basically my technical term for the whole strategy of all this. So if you're wondering, like, I'd really love to know more about this, you can shoot us an email. There's a link to our business course below. I have videos. I have blog posts, I got lots of information for you, but the first step I think should be watching or reading the book Tribes um, by Seth Godin. I think that's the number one start. Last point, number three, personalize every step to your process. So when you create an experience for your clients, let's say you're starting your business, right? You're brand new, um, starting in 2020. One of the best things you can do as you start marketing, as you start to put yourself out there, like, hey, I wanna be a professional, is to let people in to your life, but to personalize every part of the experience so that what they see online, the personal side that they're starting to get attached to matches their experience. So for example, if you were um, you know, posting a couple portfolio shots on Instagram and then doing an, a, a shot that shows something about your everyday life, letting people into who you are, what makes you unique, something crazy that happened to you, any tips or tricks about something in your life that you're really good at, mine would never be cooking, but for some people it is. What are you uniquely gifted at outside of photography, your hobbies, your passions? You share something about that, right? But then when someone books you, it's this strictly corporate feeling, like the emails are super professional, like with no exclamation marks, no excitement. Maybe your, your pricing guide is just a list of texts without any pictures of your face or your family, nothing to let them get to know you. It's not gonna match up, right? So if you have this personal brand that you're forming and people are getting attached to you, but then once they give you a deposit, it feels like this strict stoic version of you is what they're working with, that's really gonna be a letdown. 
We learned early on in our business that every part of our process has the opportunity to be personal, whether it's our pricing guide that we created where it starts off with a letter from us and 10 things you should know about Michael and I before um, booking, and then it goes into our philosophy and our process. We don't just start with the numbers. We don't just dive right into like a list of prices and collections because that's not personal. And there's value in adding personality to every single part of the experience. So when our client, for example, when our clients book with us, I write them a handwritten note. We package up a bridal guide that has a letter in it for me as well. And we mail it to their house. Once they, once the wedding has been shot, we surprise them with a canvas and a note right after the wedding. Actually before the wedding, we send them a um, movie and a meal gift card so they can go out on a date night. And that has a letter from us. And sometimes it's to one of our favorite restaurants. We literally have transitioned recently because of the caliber of our price point. We now send Ruth Chris gift cards um, for 100 to 150 bucks um, to our couples uh, for their dinner, like their, their date night. Michael and I literally just went there last night for a special date night because we never get to go on date nights these days. And so we adapt from our own life what we think our couples. It's another way to personalize a part of the experience. So overall, those three tips are ways that you can get started. But if you're trying to be a wedding photographer in 2020, I would encourage you, and especially those of you who spend a lot of time on YouTube where this whole world, it's full of technical information that is amazing, but let this be a reminder that if you truly wanna grow and you wanna stand out and you wanna be noticed and you wanna build a brand that is purposeful and not just about profit and shooting pretty pictures, you've gotta let people into your life. It's not as scary as it seems and it's actually more beneficial and the rewards are incredible. So in conclusion, just know that I'm not saying that you shouldn't dive into the business technical side of things or the shooting and gear, like the technical side in that world. Those are all really important things. And we talk about that on this channel. All I'm saying is that there is another side of business that a lot of photographers completely miss and then they don't understand why they're not growing. And so my hope is that this is a video that reminds you like, man, maybe I should pay a little bit more attention to how much I'm inserting myself into my business and not spend less time learning and growing from the technical side, but add this in addition to that part of your education and your moving forward as a photographer. There's so much here for you. So when you are in a season where you're thinking like, I just wanna change the way I market, I just wanna change the way I have an experience with my clients, and there's gotta be something more. Um, there are resources linked below that will allow you to learn how we've done that in our own business. But also I want this place on YouTube, our home on YouTube, to be a place where you can learn about both things because both things are so incredibly important. Uh, my encouragement to you is that if you feel like you're lopsided on your education, like where you feel like I spent all my time trying to learn technically and I never try to figure out how to build a personal brand, we want this to be a great place for you to learn in both areas of education. So if you've never subscribed before, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss videos in the future. And I'm excited that you tuned in today. Bye. Bye.